What I would like to propose, if Adam is the uh, tech ball warden. I hope so. Okay. <laughs> what I'd like to propose is we call the meeting in order and just get started. Um, we can do things that don't require Dennis or Heidi. Uh, so uh, call the meeting in order. I'll note that there are four members of the planning commission present. Uh, uh, Adam Crum, Jim Cornwell, Todd Bressing, uh, Jen Heon, uh, Dave Brower is excused, and we're waiting for uh, Heidi Boys to arrive. Um, we are joined tonight by several members of Norbert's Heart. Um, not all of whose names I will keep straight, so I'll just ask if you don't mind introducing yourself. Well, I'm from MCPC. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I couldn't tell. Mike Markwood. Mike. Yes. I'm uh, sitting in for quote. How do you spell your last name? Uh, N is in Nancy. A R C O W I C H. N A R C O W I C H. Yeah. Got it. From MCPC. And then from the Heart. Graham Copeland. Hey, Brim. And Carl Dragon. But on uh, the interwebs, we have uh, Eric Johnson, our engineer. Who else? Is anyone else attending? Uh, Eric, is your colleague on the line? Yes, oh, John is here. Hi. Yep. Hi, John Ringbach with the uh, Panini Associates. All right. Nice, nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. So yes, of course. Me. Well, I don't know. Um, so, um, and then uh, one uh, member in the public here is related to a matter in our um, uh, old business, 714 Montgomery. Welcome, Michael. Thanks for coming tonight. Um, so I'd like to start by welcoming everyone. New Year, same old, same old gig. Um, a lot uh, on our plate this year. Um, and by way of chair's update, I'd like to note, Heidi, how are you? Welcome. Importantly, uh, tomorrow night at Borough Council, there will be a presentation of the first plan for Station Circle. Um, you can see the plan uh, on the internet if you um, go to the borough's meeting webpage, download the meeting packet, and you can see some of the sketches. Uh, so I encourage everyone here and who's watching, who's interested in Station Circle, to, to attend that meeting. I don't know if there'll be comment or discussion, but um, it's certainly worth hearing what the designers have to say. Um, I'll also, by way of update, say that we uh, cannot report significant <coughs> progress on any of the zoning changes that we voted on or worked on. The solicitor's still working on some of the language. Um, Chloe did send us the other day a few tweaks to the zoning changes related to the SALDO. Um, you'll recall in our last meeting, we recommended she modify those um, the, the code she had written, and she's done that, and sent it back to us. She's not here tonight. I haven't had a chance to review it, so I think we should just postpone that conversation until, until we have a chance to look at it, and Chloe's here. Uh, so that's what I have by way of chair's update. Um, before we move along with anything else, I'd like to ask um, if we can add three items to the agenda tonight. Um, first, um, it is traditional in January that we elect officers, so I'd like to at least put that on the agenda under um, announcements and updates. I'd like under old business to speak for a few minutes about um, solar panels. Uh, I think there's some very minor updates there and maybe a plan of action that we can take. Um, so um, I'd like to have a vote on amending our agenda to have an election of officers and a discussion of solar panels. All in favor of amending the agenda for those discussions? Aye. Right. Any opposed? Okay, so we will amend the agenda. Um, let's move on then to election of officers. Um, we um, traditionally elect officers in January for a one year term. Um, however, we do not have a full um, group here tonight. Dave's not here, he is vice chair. Uh, we also have only six planning commission members right now. Uh, Adam and Jen were reappointed by council, but there remains one vacancy, which council will discuss tomorrow night. Uh, so what I would like to propose is that we hold off an election of officers until next month when everyone is here. Um, so I'd like to um, ask if there's any discussion about that. And if it's agreeable to everyone, a motion to postpone election of officers until our February meeting and continue with the officers we have for one more month. I so move. Is there a second? A second. Thank you, Heidi. All in favor of postponing election of officers till February. Aye. Aye. Can I just ask a question, though? Yes. Um, 
Uh, are we going to get someone to replace Jim Spear? Yes, there are two candidates. Okay. You can do their resumes uh, in the council packet. Uh, council did not vote on, on replacements. Um, and I'm actually not sure whether they'll vote tomorrow. Uh, I understand they did not vote because Bob Weisbord has resigned from the council, so there are only six council members. And council did not feel it was appropriate for six members to vote on a member of the planning commission. It should be a full council that votes on a member of the planning commission. That's what I was told. We're all looking like Republicans. <laughs> well, that's why we have to comment. We're, we're, we're in handcuffs here. Yes, we're in dynamic stasis. So anyway, I don't know, maybe council will appoint someone tomorrow night, I don't know, but it seems for us it makes sense to wait until we have <clears throat> So thank you for that. Um, review of December minutes. Uh, Adam has circulated, um, I circulated minutes that Adam gave to me of our December meeting. Thank you, Adam, as always, for tasks that shall not be thankless because I'm thanking you. Um, but it's a, it's a, it's a task. Um, does anyone have any comments, questions, corrections to the minutes that Adam presented? No? Okay, if so, could I have a motion to approve the minutes as presented by Adam? Okay. Heidi moves and Jim seconds. All in favor of approving the minutes as presented by Adam? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So the minutes are approved, five to zero. And then the last under announcements and updates is to reiterate our meeting schedule for the coming year. Um, I do apologize for the voluminous back and forth and difficulty in arriving on dates. I certainly didn't expect that it would be so hard, but the minute we don't have a meeting on the first Monday of the month, it becomes a scheduling nightmare because we have to find a night where there's no other meeting. We have to find a night when this thing is available. And those don't always coincide. There are a lot. Why, why do we have to do that? Uh, because it makes, it improves access to our meetings to the public, which I think is important. That's a fair question, though. And is it a legal requirement? Uh, I don't know that it is a legal requirement. It sounded from the discussion as though it might, as if it might be. It might and be. I'm not clear on that. I, I'm not clear either. I read an email that it wasn't, <clears throat> that it was council's preference. All I can say is this, I'm not clear, but personally, I feel it's important. It allows people like the gentleman on our screens tonight to attend more easily, improves participation. Right. Um, and uh, it turns out um, going to the second Monday conflicts with the heart, which is a conflict because two of our members are in the heart. And much as we love them, we can't be in two places at once. So next year, we'll even get an earlier beat on it and try to avoid this, this problem. I thought by starting in the middle of November. In any case, um, we have a couple of irregular meetings. In, month, in March, we will meet the second Monday, March 13th. I did discuss with Dennis Montagna, that's one month where we really are just going to swap meetings. The Planning Commission and the Department will swap meetings that month. Um, in July, uh, we'll meet on Wednesday, July 5th. Um, um, so we'll all be talking fireworks. And then uh, Wednesday, in September, we always have to find a new date because of Labor Day, so we will meet Wednesday the 6th. Um, so March 13th, April 5th, July 5th, and September 6th are um, unusual dates for us this year. Um, and we will try real hard to stick bare guns and have no meeting in August. Um, so with that, I think we can move to old business. Um, we have two items, they might not be final plan, and I'm really perplexed that the applicant's not here. Um, Eric, do you have any insight into that? Does the applicant, do you believe, is the applicant informed? No, I don't have uh, any insight why they're not there. Yeah, I think it's 7.30. So. We always meet at 7.00. Okay, well, we should continue on then, and um, we can talk about uh, 7.14 Montgomery Avenue. Um, so I'd like, I don't, I, I was, I'm surprised. I, I thought some members of the public would be here tonight. Um, uh, we did try to get the word out to people meeting out flame that we would be discussing this. Um, but to set the stage for everybody. Um, excuse me. Can I just interject? Yeah. Um, so, Dennis was asked to um, have members of the HARP here, mm -hmm. and I see there are, and that's great, but he had a conflict. Um, 
he said another meeting, and he I felt that he was going to be a little later on the agenda. He's going to try to get here by 7:30. So okay. there may be some reintroducing of some of the material he gets. What time is it? Seven ten. Seven ten. Um, well, I will. Um, I'll ask Michael. Um, do you mind if we wait about ten minutes to start your item? Is that okay with you? Yeah. Okay. So with the commission's uh, uh, approval, how about if we talk about solar panels for a few minutes and see if we can. Or we'll be interested in that too. Um, but before Dennis gets in. That'd be great. Okay. Well, it would have been later, I think, so no one's here for Save I know. <laughs> Which property on Save Are we 32 Save Iron. It's an old it's a colonial house from the like seventies. It's um it's been through uh, tentative and preliminary review a year and a half ago. It's just coming in for its final approval. Um, all right, so I wanted to give a brief update about solar panels. As you know, last time we talked about it, we were really on the fence trying to grapple with whether or not the um, effectiveness, you know, right now the default position of the borough is solar panels need to be installed flat to the roof uh, of a structure. Um, and there was a debate about whether we should be more permissive to make it easier for people to have uh, uh, efficient solar panels. Um, um, we began looking into this and um, began to realize the question about whether or not it was a real constraint to have panel panels flat to the roof rather than angled in some way was a big deal. So we decided we'd look into it, we'd see what we could learn. Um, and I only to, in last month, Jim, you reported to us and what you your family has learned in having these installed, which is that it's a minimal impact, really, that can be compensated for by increasing the square footage of the solar panels, essentially. And the technology is ever right. is ever improving, and it matters less and less. Um, we've we've also learned uh, that um, reporting from Chloe Moore. Uh, says that Zoning Officer Kevin Walsh, Walsh reports he's not aware of the situation in which our zoning provision has resulted in the denial of someone's application. So no one has come to the borough to ask to do something different from what our current allows, at least to, to Kevin's uh, knowledge. Um, Kathleen Avonau sent a note um, um, remind, you know, underscoring that this is a very dynamic um, uh, field right now and hard to keep up with. But that um, um, she writes some commissions, and she's referring to HARBs, may give more weight to standard 10 and secondary interior standards for rehabilitation than might one might once have. New additions and adjacent or related new construction will be undertaken in such a manner that, if removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the historic property and its environment would be unimpaired. Which basically reflects one of the ideas we were talking about: is that any anything added from the point of view of a solar panel, if it wasn't consistent with our code, it should be reversible, it should be able to be taken off the building. So um, we had uh, gotten some advice that we might um, check with the uh, Lower Marion uh, Township part, which apparently has had a number of cases that it's had to deal with. And I think that might be one of the last bits of due diligence for us to do. Uh, and what I'd like to ask is if um, anyone here wouldn't mind uh, following up with with someone on the heart, maybe Christian Bush or somebody, just to ask them what kind of cases have been coming, what kind of issues they've been facing, and how they. So, would you mind doing that? Just a little fact finding. Yeah. Um, and I think also asking if they how this interplays with their zoning, just to see how. They, I mean, that's really the best we can do. It's the our approximate neighbor, so. I would also be willing to if make the call just okay, well, I, for you guys, you guys continuity. <laughs> if you guys want to call together, call that's again. fine with me. But I, I think that's really the last step. Let's find out, <clears throat> and then we can determine whether we what we should do about taking. Um, so that's really all I have to report on solar panels. Is that a little bit more information, which, if anything, does not point in the direction of us needing to do anything urgent. Um, but there's still one step. And if you guys could do that and report back next month, that would be true. Todd, did you determine that if there had been applications pertaining to, to solar panels? Um, Is no. Kevin online here with us? No. Kevin, I don't think, oh, Kevin's on the line. Kevin, how are you? You popped in. How was everybody? Good. 
Kevin, we were speaking about you in your absence or not knowing you're on the phone. So Chloe Moore sent us a report that said you told her, or you reported, you're not aware of a situation in which our zoning code has resulted in denial of someone's application for solar panels. Can you tell us what you've experienced regarding applications, permits, proposals for adding solar panels uh, recently? Yeah, they're all pretty similar. Oh, wow. I think uh, we lost the group. Eric, did we lose the group? Yes, it's just you, me, and John. <laughs> okay. It looks like it's still recording, and I'm still the host. It, so it popped up and said Kevin Walsh. Okay. Hmm. And Jim Spear left. Hmm. I don't see a lobby or anything. I'll wait for them to come back in. No, I don't. It did not appear that there was a lobby. It was just a letting, uh, it was admitting people as they logged in via the link. Okay. As of yet, there doesn't seem to be 32 saved by an applicant. But you guys don't have any volume right now. I think it's still connecting. Now the owl's muted. Yeah. Your audio is muted. They're not, they're not yeah. huge. I, I have a measurement at home, but they're not huge. And the back of it's about 18 inches. So if you're trying to like hide them on a flat roof, it's pretty easy to do so um, from like a design perspective on obviously on different roofs. But I think you should look at the different roof types, I guess, uh, really to how panels are set. <laughs> Uh, and it's also going to depend on where is the sun facing on a particular property, whether it goes on the front, the back, the side, or, or whatever. So I think there's some other factors. Currently, our code requires yeah, a straight O. Um, panels to be mounted parallel to a roof plane. So we're trying to figure out if that's too restrictive or not. Yeah. So Kevin, are you, what are you encountering in terms of? I think of flat is too restrictive on a flat roof. Yeah. Yeah, really, the only installations are the normal thickness of the panel minus the gap for, I guess, drainage and things like that. We haven't seen anybody try and set them up or raise them above. A lot of them would be allowed by the code. So no so one's coming in to complain about that? No. And, and then I told Chloe as well that we actually haven't even seen an application for a solar um, water either. So I can't tell if those provisions would conflict with anyone's proposals. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah. Anyway, does that sound like a good course of action? Let's find out what our Marion is experiencing, and we can talk about it for the next yep. time. Okay, we've stalled sufficiently long. Dennis is right. That's right. Who will, who will reach out to Laura Marion? Heidi and Jen. Heidi and Jen. You can come up here, too. Dennis, would you like to join us up here? <laughs> um, is there a, a Zoom link? There's one of our art members who was trying to Zoom in from Pittsburgh. Wasn't able to connect with. It wasn't able to locate the Zoom link. Is there? Can that? Be, can we send that to him? Does that person have an email address? Yes. Yeah, we tried that. I you can. I can email them the agenda. So what's? Which would seem to have worked before. What's their email address? I have it. Does this start block? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, well. Uh, I'm waiting to do that. Let me give a little background here. So, um, 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 uh, Todd, while yes. you're looking for that, I just was uh, in contact with Chris Yan that says that they will not be coming. It was not on his calendar. Okay. <laughs> All right. I guess we will drop that agenda item. Uh, we will uh, table it. Um, email address for Kevin Block. 
Kevin P. Block at Gmail. Is there any periods in there? No. Kevin P. Block see, at it's, Gmail. It's already my autofill. All I can say is I'm glad this borough is not NASA because we would have a lot of astronauts just. <laughs> Did I say that online? online? You did. You did. Your future is looking dim. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. I figured out the magic touch. Okay. Well, anyway, Mike, welcome, Michael. Michael is uh, has been working with Pro and the Planning Commission on uh, 714 Montgomery. The Price House is Michael has a. Um, Tenant sketch plan uh, application on the table, which has been presented and discussed, and we've been giving feedback over the past almost nine months now, with a year, year, and have uh, um, um, at least some issues in regard to, for example, um, um, allowing for apartment buildings in the 5B district and allowing for a fourth story within the height envelope we already permit are things we've discussed. Uh, steps we can take um, to help preserve your price house, and we've discussed zoning revisions related to that already. Um, um, so I've invited Michael to come back and look for an informal presentation of his new ideas for how this site might be developed. I know some of us have talked to him individually, but it's best, I think, for all of us to see it all at once and offer a response, and for the public to have access uh, to this as well. Uh, so, because this is a matter, it's really the first test of how the HARB and the Planning Commission are going to interact. Uh, Dennis, thank you for inviting uh, members of the HARB here. So, I, I don't know if you have a quorum or not. You actually might, which could be a problem. But this is we're, not. We're just uh, we're just members of the public. Okay. I mean, we're not, I mean, this is not an official meeting for us. Right. This is not an official meeting yeah. of HARB. I mean, we, we we sort of had a quorum just with the Planning Commission. Three of Three of your planning commission members are members of the ARB, so as soon as I showed up, we had a quorum. So my bad. Jim, I thought too. And uh, and uh, Kevin Walsh. He's not a member of the planning commission. Oh, he's not. Okay. Yeah. Well, then three. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, we're we're glad you're here um, to hear what we're going to hear about this. So this, for us, this is not a formal application. This is an ideas conversation. We are not here tonight to take any action. Uh, what we're here to do is, is learn what Michael's thinking about doing and what issues he believes need to be resolved for this project to move forward so that we can take those into consideration fully in our public conversations and so we can report to council as well. So uh, this helps us um, understand things we, we might need to look at uh, in terms of this project and it, it gives Michael an opportunity to get feedback from the members of the commission and members of are outside the context of a approval process and this is actually the way our style of revision is set up is to encourage people to come in and make these informal presentations before they have a formal application um, to spare them the trouble of going to the, exhaust, the exhaustive efforts they need to do to make a preliminary application so this is also a test of our new process um, michael we're so glad you're here uh, floor is yours um, you know everyone here at Harp, um, and we've all introduced ourselves from the, at the beginning. Uh, I have met Carl Harris. Yes. 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 Um, can I, Adam, give you a drive? Or, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Let's try it. Let's try it. Correct. It's important. I can make all copies of just the plan portion. Spread those around. Yeah. Thank you. Whoever can. Thanks. 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 <laughs> One more. I can put. I don't mind. Put trouble for you. Uh. Well, no, I don't. But I want to make sure everyone else can see. You. So. Oh, okay. Hot. I can share. Like on a slide. Yeah. So obviously everyone's familiar with the site, um, and just sort of the first portion. So um, we submitted our, tennis, our original tennis sketch plan a year ago, um, going back and forth, and um, 
you know, taken feedback regarding the zoning and regarding some of the wants and needs. And um, uh, this is uh, what we think is a good plan that um, basically takes parking underground. Um, so, okay, so here are the considerations we, did, we had basically over the past year was having the two principal buildings on the lot, which will go through the conditional use process, uh, with basically removing the connection that was originally there, that was brought up as an issue with the MPC, PC, and that I can't pronounce it, but <laughs> your group, <laughs> um, as, as well as, as, as uh, various others, of course. Um, uh, taking Doing an apartment building type on the main house side, um, as we've been discussing, fourth floor setback, uh, on the meeting house and the uh, residential, um, I think it's 3B order there. Um, providing the smaller um, 550 square foot units um, that are now, I guess, uh, going to be required. So we, we're getting ahead of that and providing those. Um, and uh, the biggest thing is moving the driveway and the entrance to the garage to Montgomery Avenue. Um, and that's for various reasons. The biggest which is uh, the slope of the lot doesn't allow you to do a parking garage off of meeting house. So the issues that, um, that, that basically I'm here to discuss on the zoning side of things um, are uh, one, uh, which uh, is the primary frontage line, uh, which I just want to bring up. And um, I understand that this has already been sort of going to be addressed, and, and we know this is sort of a uh, conflict in the code, if you will, um, where a property that has two street frontages or have two principal buildings, you have to put the front facade on a primary frontage line for the code. Um, so with two principal buildings, we will need two primary frontage lines. So I just want to bring that to everyone's attention. Um, that just seemed to a little bit of, I'm not sure if it's a conflict or not, but I just want to bring that up. Um, the next uh, conflict is on fences and walls. Um, so in order to get our garage entrance and get underground there, we need, right now the code limits uh, fences and walls to three feet in height, basically. Um, and depending on, and, and part of this is we need to understand how we're looking at the code on this because once one side of the wall is in the garage, more or less, and the other side is outside of the garage on the, you know, on the grade, and at no point will you be visually, nothing will be over the three feet visually, right? Because everything else will be down below grade. So I don't know how that's viewed, but in the code, and this was actually brought up by Kevin Walsh um, as an issue in a previous um, discussion, and uh, uh, I forget exactly what point it was, but um, it was brought up, so uh, I want to uh, reintroduce that as an issue, and again, you can see when we get to the uh, section of the garage entry how that will work better. Then the last thing, um, which is in the cell though, um, is that uh, there's a, a section B in the, in the driveway section, states that if a lot has a frontage on more than one street, the driveway shall take access from the lower class, street of lower classification. I couldn't find where streets were classified, but I can only assume that meeting house is a lower classification than Montgomery. But again, that's an assumption. If it is, we would need a waiver of that to have the driveway access from the street of higher classification, okay. if that is the case. And I don't, again, I couldn't find where the streets were classified. Um, so I went on, you know, there's more of a question. Uh, again, that's in the cell, though, so that, that wouldn't be, I don't believe, it necessarily an ordinance uh, early this year. Um, so those are basically um, the issues that need to be addressed. You see on the plan, uh, this is a rough draft, uh, you know, uh, site plan, etc. Um, it took basically everything we've been discussing into consideration. The one thing we haven't had enough feedback on, which I'm glad there's enough of you here is on, on the historic aspects. I'm, I'm glad there are our members here to, to give feedback on that because that is the one area, um, you know, it's not, not zoning related and it's not saldo related, and, um, but it is, 
you know, approval process related, and it's something that honestly is why we're doing this, right? And so that's the one thing I just haven't had feedback on. Um, our proposal does show removing the side portion. Dennis and I met over at the property and walked through it. You haven't, had, you know, some of you have had the opportunity, some of you have not. Um, so the side porch and the back garage and the back former addition um, is what we're looking to remove. Um, so that's our site plan. Uh, the driveway will go, you know, past the side there, and um, and then the next page is the garage plan. Um, and this is still again rough draft, but it shows that we, you know, we have sufficient parking for the site, but not too much. Uh, and that's, this is uh, just shows a, a sort of a rough entry section um, that sort of shows where these walls come into play. Um, so the um, okay, it's over here. so this is, you know, this is the garage ramp down here. Okay, and this this is basically grayed on the other side of the wall. However, it's probably really somewhere in between. Sort of comes like that. It's not exact, um, but this is basically the wall that would have to be there. And then this is a little piece of wall in the back that would be from grade at three feet. But again, when you look from here, this is a three foot wall. Are we calculating, you know, this is larger than three feet. So that's where, the, that's where my, this, this is the question mark. From a design perspective, it's a three foot wall when you look at it from the outside. This is a, could be, you know, how are we considering that foundation wall? We can say, this is our only question on this. And I don't know if this is a zoning issue or not. I'm just, this is a discussion I don't know. You all can decide whether it's a zoning issue or not. Um, it's not a design issue in my mind because, that, you know, you really aren't going to see huge, you know, walls anywhere um, unless you're in the garage, basically. So that's uh, those are those are really the only items I have to address, um, to be honest. And then it's just uh, getting feedback on the historic aspect of just the project in general, not anything specific to these items. I would say, or if there are anything specific, then sure. So is that in that section? Is the entrance to the garage at the back edge of the building? So, so it's going to slope down from here. And the, can you go back to the section? Yeah, the section can be. So yeah. you'll enter here, and, you know, again, the grade is about here. So as you go down, the car will be now you know, somewhere. I guess this is already put age probably where it kind of enters. No, but I'm thinking it's the garage is open until you get yeah, to the back Yeah, I'll go back up one page. Yes, it'll be open until here. Oh, until back there. OK, so that section. So there'll be a three, there'll, there'll, there'll be the wall here, and the grade is off, right? And then. You go down into so the garage. So it'll, from a, it'll be you meet code, you know, building code from a safety perspective and everything like that. From meeting house, when you're standing at meeting house, mm -hmm. what do you see? Three foot wall. And then down into the yeah. driveway? Is that three foot wall, three foot wall, or that is uh, here? That looks like That's a lot of parking. It, isn't that more parking than you had before? It is. Uh, no. It's way past spaces. I think the original one, like the original tenant, well, this is a totally different building than the original tenant sketch plan, so I'm not comparing those two. Is that because you have more smaller units, so you need more parking? We need more, we need more parking, and also it's now underground. The original one was uh, at grade parking. It says 25 spaces, I think. How many units will there be now? We're still working that out. I don't have that nailed down exactly. So, um, you know, we're, trying to, we're still trying to work that out. It's going to depend on how big we get them and what we need them. What kind of range are we talking about? For the units themselves? No. Uh, and size. <clears throat> I was looking at about 15. Um, and then, you know, we had to work in this 550 square foot thing, which just sort of came up recently. Um, in the zoning, fifteen total. I, I, again, I don't know. It's in that range, fifteen. I would say at the high end. 
And the height of the proposed new structure? Uh, the limit's 45. Our actual height will be pushing that, but not probably not quite. Probably with you know, and again, depends on where you're measuring that to. You know, because there is so actually a requirement. Four I'm sorry, four store. Yeah, there is actually a requirement in the code for something has to be like an extension above the roof line on certain facades. So that will. I don't know how you're measuring that from the you know. Forgive me because we didn't have the context sure. of seeing this for the first time. And I'm curious because we saw the rendering earlier that it showed, but you mentioned what would be demolished. Can we go back and look yeah, at that? Go. You have to take down the side porch to get the drive yeah, so, file, right? So you probably can't see because it's very late. It's like superimposing here, but there's a garage right here. Right. And then there's a the and then there's there's a small addition here. Yeah. yeah. Was, sorry, okay. Okay. So there's a little. I don't know if you can see it now. Earlier so in your presentation was a photo. Can we look at the yeah. photo to understand uh, yeah. that? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Makes more sense. Uh, I think from the back and we'll look at the yeah, yes. Go. So it's this garage here. Mm -hmm. It's this piece mm -hmm. right here, right? It's this piece that we're so we're leaving the right. original house intact there. Right. When were those built? Within, within the period of significance. Yeah, they they're we think at least at least the one on the far right there with the door in it. Um, and and uh, an addition shows up there in some of the early postcard views that we have. So yeah, that's that's by the prop at least by the 1880s, 1890s. You know, that it's it's there quite a long time because we haven't explored exactly how how old it is. But it would be you know we, we would not see that as sort of a, as, as a write off. I think I can see from here that it's a stucco side on it. So inside. Inside this this wall, this stone wall comes all the way down. So there's exposed uh, yeah. original stone wall right. inside there. Right. If that's what you're right. trying to get to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can picture it from seeing from the inside, and you, you step down onto that porch area. You can walk through very thick yeah. original wall. It used to make it was probably it was an open porch at one point, I think, and it was it was then closed, and it feels like it was. But yeah. Yeah. There you go. Um, but I think that's a later. So you have this, later edition, this stone wall comes all the way down, down, all the way front to back. Right. Yeah. And I, I agree that the the um, from the other from the back side, the addition of well the the one story section in the garage, frankly, are detractors from the original. I agree. I wouldn't make that statement right, right across the board. I mean, I think that the, the garage, I would not have a problem with removing the garage, but I think we need to look more carefully at, at those other, they're, they're very substantially constructed stone additions. Um, we think it, at least some of it is, is really quite early in the history you know, of the building, comparatively speaking. So I think, I think it, you know, it needs to be looked at, but I think they're, I don't think it's worth sort of one size fits all here in terms of, of, sort of, 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 of removal of those components. And the, the small small closure on the left. Yeah, that's that the be, front of that stucco. Mm -hmm. yeah. That will be removed to allow for the drive for the yeah. correct yeah. process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for showing us that. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, Graham, probably it's going to be better for us to sort of not get into sort of a, 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 a deliberative posture. Because of this not being, it's, it, this A is not one of our our meetings. Um, you know, we're really looking at this as, as a way of gaining information because we haven't, right. as a group, um, had any presentation on this. So, I mean, I think in terms of uh, tonight, I just assume kind of di digest it all, and then we can uh, we we can be, be discussing That's it right. as a, as a group in our meeting. So. Did you get into the matter of the proposed materials yet on the new? No, we did not. No, and that's the kind of feedback I'm looking for. If there is anything that <clears throat> needs to be on there, or you know, that's a discussion item for me. So I, I, I'm not proposing anything at this time. 
Uh, I'm still also very focused on the site plan, the zoning, you know, things of that nature uh, right now, and just getting general design feedback so I can come up with some ideas, you know. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with that. Yeah. I don't want to discourage questions, but our, we normally like go from the outside in when we look at projects. We, we first start with site planning, massing urban form, zoning issues, and then as we get comfortable with those, then we begin to talk about more of the details. Things like that. So it's not really expected that you come here today with much of that thought out. I mean, I think today the real reaction is, does this work as a site plan? Right. What needs to make it work as a site plan? You know, I think issues like access from Montgomery Avenue, you know, what are the pros and cons of that? Um, are there other options, or is that, that the option? Uh, the relative location of the new building and the historic building is an interesting for us. And that's and that's that's a prime that would be a primary concern for us as a heart in terms of what the relationship of any new construction is to the so associated go down the page for me real quick. I can yeah. address it's a little tricky because I can tell you I can tell you what we did to try to address that. Yeah. We we did consider that. Um, but those are the issues we would be looking at right now. Um, so this this whole quarter so Basically, the code requires for apartment buildings to have four courtyards as, as a frontage type, and then there's one other that is really mean less. Mm -hmm. We put these here because the code requires it, okay, and it also gets us to the 50% uh, frontage build out on. Okay, so these were all that was good. Now, what the code really wants you to do with this building is actually, and I'm sorry if you're not an architect, most of you are. It wants you to rotate it this way and have this facing this way. That's really what the code wants. This is your courtyard, right? They want, if you can rotate this 90 degrees, that's what they want. They want a garden court facing. They want, exactly. Now, we are going to try to do our best to accommodate that. But what we, to, this is where we try to say, okay, well, this is what they want. But if we did that, you're going to have this wall against the price house. We don't want to do that. So we wanted to open this courtyard. And again, we're still designing this, but there is a, going to be a flow. There's going to be, a, you know, the, we purposefully did this to open this up so we weren't just bombarding it. I kept it off of there. I'm trying to keep about 25 feet off of that building. Okay, and I'm doing all these things are very deliberate, just so everyone, so everyone understands. It's not just addressing this question, but this is just in general how we have thought through this project and really try to address everyone's feedback. And really, I, I, I really think we did a really good job, to be honest. I think. You know, so that is the consideration there. And then this, we the code want, again, code wants us to put it the other way. And we said no, we're gonna figure it out from with design so that we can address it, address the code. But we also want to address the price list. So that's what we're trying to do here. So we open the building up and put the courtyard there. So this is all flow open and keeping that as far away from there as we kind of can. Before we continue, um, I'm sorry for interrupting. I'd like to let the planning commission know we established contact with the applicant at 32 Safe Line. <laughs> <laughs> and they've requested they be kept on the agenda tonight. Uh, when we're finished with this agenda item, they can do this by Zoom. Okay. So it is a brief agenda item. It shouldn't, shouldn't take long. But I just want everyone to know that so that we can manage our. I mean, it's, it's only fair. They were, they were apparently confused because the borough office sent out an earlier schedule for the planning commission before we had actually approved it. So it was not uh, anything they were really aware of that, that they should have been here tonight. So I think we should give them that courtesy. So if you're watching Chris and Vince, we will uh, put you up next on the agenda. Okay, sorry about that. Question. So that. The area of the driveway ramp to the underground garage. Why not? Have you looked at um, decking over this piece? We did. Uh, we need a height there to be able to get certain things down there, like handicap accessible bands. Um, but is it still descending at that point? Yeah, it is. Section? Yeah. Uh, back to this section. Oh, I see. There is. Yeah, yeah, this there's this uh, slide label makes it look like it. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah. So we do. We, we. I. That was one of my things I, I've been asking about, and we just can't accommodate with the slope requirements of the driveway. And the driveway can't be any steeper than this. No. 
that's and, and, and that's why we sort of we're sticking within the requirements. Some of those things happen. We also don't want to supersede, you know, oh, we don't yeah, want people exactly. bottoming out. You know, sure. that's not not what we're going for. Um, you know, listen, as we really get into details and try to engineer that, my goal would be to close that up as much as possible. Let's put it that way. Curious uh, how folks feel about routing the ingress and egress to Montgomery Avenue. And I'm also curious, I know Eric Johnson has thought about that a bit. I'll first ask planning commissioners, and then Eric, if you have thoughts about that circulation that's being proposed. Are you comfortable with the circulation being proposed connecting to Montgomery Avenue? I mean, uh, I mean well, not to present like this much of a choice, but I'm just curious what your reaction is. I'm sorry, Eric, I stepped all over you. Were you going to say something? Uh, I mean, I would, I would say it is, it's a property frontage uh, on, um, the property has frontage on Montgomery Avenue, I you know, so you can get access to and from that road i just as i have noted before uh, i was pointing out to the applicant that it is uh, a very busy road and it is a lower marion road so regardless of any uh you know traffic flow in or out of that site they will have to coordinate with lower marion as the owner of that road um okay curious if if, if that um if the uh, garage in the corner went on the market, could you reroute to meeting house? Yeah. Well, there's, so there's a, I mean, that's, if that's you could acquire that parcel, the triangular parcel you're saying, but then the other, the other thing that's interesting is just if you could get an easement off of the Royal Cafe building. It doesn't go through there. I mean, it does it's another property, but it's, it, it, there's a drop. You can't really see there's there. There's a drop. Um, you could go in through the back, yeah. Um, in through the back. You could, I guess, in theory, you could go in the back of that parking lot and kind of. Yeah, you would need a permanent easement. You would have sort of like here. What is so the topography? This, this, is, this is that little, little car crazy property. So, like, this would be the point right here. Which you would have to go through here. That's the only point that touches that property. Yeah, but it does touch does. at that point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What is the grade on the property? Is it like four or five? Four or five. Which, uh, which one are you? This one? No, back in the rear corner by the by where, where there are four cars parked. Yeah, what, what's yeah, that? Yeah, there is a drop. There's a drop off there. So I don't know how significant off that my head, but it's 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 down from. Well, Montgomery Avenue, if I'm right, is, is rising across the front. This way. It's rising, rising. Going, going from left to right. So uh, if the if the ingress alongside. The restaurant is more or less level. You might you might have about an equivalent to topographical difference from that corner. Yeah, I also don't know what incentive that owner would have, and they would also be losing parking in their parking lot, which I don't know if yeah, they would be, be meeting there. Or have to be all kinds of accommodations. And I think there's other issues that may arise I from that. I wouldn't doubt it. They meet there's they have parking that meets their requirements for their property they'd be right. losing what i'm looking at Michael, is the plan that you're showing us crowds the price house terribly yes it does the ramp crowds the the, the access ramp it's like picture the lincoln tunnel entrance i mean we've all done that right um there is no possibility of of life alongside either side of the lincoln tunnel entrance it is a and it's a dead zone and it's great at getting cars into the tunnel but it's a nasty nasty place so if there were another way the only to way get into your base there's only there's only one way now, i don't think that's probably true well, i think just, there's other just, ways uh, 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 you know this is this is about 10 feet higher i can't share the three of you on this can't slide get down. You can, there is no possible way to get if, down if you if you could acquire this piece of the lot, lease back, or, you know, like do a, do a, a condoization where you basically, could, you know, you can maintain all the parking, you only lose two or three spaces actually in the whole lot. If you, if you had a driveway and you're, you know, here, I just, 
I think. But that's just an impression. It's not a study. You know? Yeah. Um, I know you're searching. You're searching for ways, and so are we. I don't really have another way to get parked underground. That's if you know, I'm that's being, not your property. We can't. I'm being straightforward and honest. There is no other way to get parked underground on this site. There just is not. I don't. I, I happen to agree with all of you. There's just no other way, right? Um, it's, it, it, there's, the site is like, the slope is what the slope is. I can't change that. The, the meeting house road, meeting house lane is X feet higher than Montgomery. I can't change that. No, I understand. Yeah, and I think by ours, you know, again, this is really in the spirit of just kind of helping to give you guidance. The way the harm would look at this as we're looking at how the historic building is being treated. But part of that is how the adjacent, how how the site is treated, and how the relationship between the historic building and the site is. And as Jim was pointing out, it kind of makes puts it onto an island. And you know, and sort of exploring other ways that that might be handled would really be huge because it would it would give a lot of the site back to the historic building. And that's really what we're, what we're looking at. I, I understand that. I guess my point is that I've been looking at every option for the past year, and this is the option, basically. So I have looked at that, and I just, and I really have, and I don't mean, I'm not trying to short the, because it's an important piece of this, and I do not disregard that, but I've looked at every single possible way to accomplish the goal here, and this is the only thing that, I can, that we can engineer. It's just, and I'm not an engineer, but this is the only thing we can engineer, the whole team, including all the architects, engineers, lawyers, me, everyone else. This is, and I'm not trying to be, you know, I don't know how else to be about this because I just, I've gone through all the iterations of that and I've really tried really, really hard. I hope that everyone kind of understands that and it's the overriding theme here. And like, this is kind of where we are, you know? So I, 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 think we understand, understand. I think we understand that you're trying hard. <laughs> <laughs> but the site and the, and the yeah, it has exigencies challenges. of the site it has are challenges. fighting you well, tooth and nail. 100%. Can I, I have a comment which is probably going to be ridiculous based on what you just said. You've done your due diligence, you've tried all of the configurations, but can we turn to the um, image of the aerial image showing the residential behind it because I'm just like from a from a different like more maybe practical point of view slowing down traffic on Montgomery to turn into um, the underground parking and I remember talking about this last year <laughs> But I just don't remember why this wasn't viable to um, to enter. Yeah, driveway, 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 driveway. It's slow. Traffic is slow. This is driveway. Why didn't we? Or you must have looked at. Can't get down. You can't get down there. You can't. It's too high. You can't. There's no like. By the time you ramp down, you're you're not far down enough. Oh, and you can't turn to keep going. Like I'm thinking of the more more foods, the more you turn, and you enter the less, foods on no, the it's just more You just get right, you go it, right down. It, 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 we looked at that, and like it's just with the slope requirements and everything, you just you won't be down until you're like mm -hmm. out here. Mm -hmm. So I have yeah. another question. I know that it's in the code. You have to have a 22 foot wide driveway. Yes. Is there any leniency there? Because in that's terms of making it more narrow. Yeah. That would be a question for you. Well, that's a, a serious um, question. That's good because feedback. That's I mean, overwhelming. That's, that's commercial. Good totally. That's good feedback. I, I, I think there's house. there's a way to probably bring it in, but at some point it's going to have to let two cars by. Yeah, so that'd be like 19. So you know that's that's the limitation, but it doesn't have to be necessarily that. I, I don't know how we work that. Out. That's an engineering question, but we can. That's that the first one, and the second yeah. one is why do you need so many units? I mean, that's an awful lot of cars. We're going underground. We're saving. No, no, I'm not asking that. I'm asking why do you need so many units to therefore so many parking spaces. To make it, it seems like, it, as I said, it's a lot more than it was when we looked at this. Before. It was original was ten with parking on the grade. 
was the original one. So well, uh, that's well. I mean, I mean it's we'll now up to twenty-five, fifty units, and seventy-five <laughs> units. And yeah, but why? Bad, but I mean, oh, that's I that's really the big that. question. Yeah, yeah, why are we trying to make this such a huge development? You're right next to a very tiny, small-scale neighborhood. I. I'm just really confused by it. I, I know it's on Montgomery Avenue, and I know you're adjacent to another big project that's going up. So, you know, that would be, you know, inconsistent or, in, you know, disingenuous to think that you shouldn't. But it's really big right next to that really small neighborhood. And that's what I'm reacting to. Yeah. It's very strong I mean, that it's just overwhelming yeah i understand uh you it's know not the, zoning, next to the, right the zoning actually allows for more I'm, without I, historic and that's, everything else. A, that's probably well, a problem <laughs> well, what i'm saying is that <laughs> but, you know the zoning code is telling what we want on montgomery avenue and the zoning code says you can cover 90 percent of this lot in impervious and you can cover the building 80 percent of the lot and Right, you know, then, I'm not doing any of those things. But the NARPA's comprehensive, <laughs> comprehensive code suggests that we don't. And well, it's a, a suggestion. It, the there's a difference, is. obviously, between obviously between suggestion and what's legally yeah, I, allowed. And what we're here yeah. to deliberate is, and I'm just being honest with you, yeah, yeah. I'm very uncomfortable with it. It's overwhelmingly large. For 45 feet. I mean, we've talked about this ad nauseum, that 45 feet next to that little neighborhood is overwhelming. And I know you have a 25-foot setback. I, that's on top of a parking garage. You're not going to be able to grow trees there. I mean, it's going to be we well, but you can on top of a parking garage, not big trees. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, and actually, I mean, if you look at it functionally and practically, the price houses on Montgomery Avenue, nothing else is. Yeah. Everything else that you're building is on Meeting House Lane. Yeah. So, and that's the effect that it has, and that's what the, that for us, I and mean, for the heart, that's what the overwhelmingness is. We're looking at, at, at an historic building that is on a small piece of land. Was, this was a farmhouse on a really big piece of land at one time. So now it has its site, and it is on Montgomery Avenue, but nothing else really is. So you can, you I mean, you can, see that as a Montgomery Avenue address, but in reality it's not. And, and that's what I think we're, we're responding to, the overwhelming scale of that on a, a much smaller scale residential street. And that's, I think, the, the, the neighbors are responding, have responded to that as well, to some extent. And, well, I mean, did you talk to the triangular property owner about their yeah. property? I mean, that is Not no, not the corner, not the not the garage, but the other uh, triangular piece. They just bought that recently. But they did it. The car crazy building. Or something? This uh, it's not the the, the, no, the gas office. station. Yeah, that's the that's car crazy building. Oh, that is. Yeah. yeah. The car the, the old car crazy. I don't know. Uh, what they uh, he moved in there. Changed it to me. Nothing yet. Interesting. Or, or Hmm. So they, uh, but they're not interested in right. uh, selling. No, you just spend a lot of money. What, what, uh, <coughs> what would you intend to use Price House for? Is it, would you still use it for your offices? Would those just be your offices, or would you? As of now. I guess part of the, um, what I'm reacting to, too, is that it's a huge gray swath. <laughs> I mean, it could be just be the way it's depicted, but you have a huge gray swath, and then you have a huge brown swath, and it, it, it's just like so massive next to the price house. It's, it's really. Um... Well, I think that to me, I'd like to see the three D massing. Yeah, the figure, the figure ground is not. Um, it's not doesn't really represent the visual feel or what the actual site feels yeah. like. To be honest, it, it's very you know it's very hard to tell. Uh, what it would be like to stand in certain places. And the back of the Price House is really not an architectural destination today, right? <laughs> you saw the, the photos of it. This is, I mean, this is not a, you know, it's the, it's the front, it's the only part that's remaining as far as like a um, sort of, mm -hmm. you know, its original presentation. And so a question is, you know, what what does this development do to that impression that, you know, so there's two elements, right? One is how big is the building behind? 
and how close is it in terms of crowding the house? And then the other is this this driveway um, has you know an adverse impact on the foreground of the building. And then the, the final point is the is the massing as it relates to the adjacent single family homes. Um, you know the immediate parcels to the along Montgomery Avenue on either side of Price House are commercial uses. They're either auto oriented or high rise commercial. I mean, it's, uh, that's the context. Did you try putting the driveway on the other side? On the other side of the Price, the price house, house. We looked at that and. I mean, we can relook at that. We did look at that at some point in one of the iterations, and uh, there were a bunch of reasons it didn't work, and I don't remember off the top of my head. Because, it, you know, that would be a big improvement if you could, because mm -hmm. you wouldn't be go, going down a meeting house lane and then mm -hmm. having to peer over a cavern. So you're saying, cavern. Coming, you're saying coming in basically here. Yeah. 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 Maybe a longer run for your slope. And maybe a little. Would it be higher? Maybe mm -hmm. lower. Maybe we can relook at that if that's mm -hmm. feedback. And it's also further along the intersection. Yeah. yeah, which is helpful. I mean, there's going to be most likely we haven't gotten a traffic study yet, and we will obviously. Uh, but there's, you know, can we go away see, from the building rather sense. than right adjacent to it, which would yeah. feel better. I mean, I, I seriously think that would help. Yeah. Uh, you know what? There's also I don't know how historical it is, but there's that the little piece of wall. Yeah. I think it was a horse. Thing. Yeah. Commercial. How much parking with the commercial use? So I don't know if that's a, you know, again, these are all just considerations. Full lane. It is. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah, like, it know, is. You know, it's, it's like, like, which is better? And yeah, I forget I if that might have been the issue we were trying to not touch that. I, I forget, but look, we can, I can re look at that. So we'll look at this for but I definitely, yeah, like I, I, I certainly will. Um, but again, the, the overriding theme is that, like, the driveway has to be on, on Montgomery in order to get a parking garage on the ground. That, that's, that's really because concerning. of your slope. Because of the slope. I mean, that's perplexing because, I, again, and I, I apologize, but when I when I think of turning into Whole Foods off of Winwood, it's like you're down in there in like twenty feet. Yeah, but it's the same level. It's the same level as the meeting area, though. So it's actually the first floor is way up. Yeah, the meeting area. Oh yeah, right. I'm and sorry. also, it's it's way longer than twenty feet. It seems like oh, yeah, it seems no, like a big. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, coming from the other end. It's, it would be coming from the other side, from the which is long. Yeah, but, yeah, exactly. but it, yeah, it's a long, it's a long ramp. But yeah. the, it's about probably about this long. But then I sort of wonder too. It's like if you if you came, we looked at it here, and you end, up, you end up using up the whole thing for turning in for driveway. Yeah, well, you can have the same run length this way. You just end up backing the house up to the cut. I mean, the advantage is that when you do open up the house, if you move the driveway to the back, the, house, the price house is relieved. You can open back the slope, just it, it just doesn't work. Why doesn't it work on the back? I can show you maybe some old diagrams that show why it doesn't work. Okay, I mean, since this is about 125 feet or whatever it is, I mean, it's a, yeah, let me, let me yeah, ask you. Then you got to turn. You end up there. You're squeezed up against there. And then you got to turn and come back, and there's just no. You can turn there. and ram. Can, can I ask two around. questions? Um, one is, what kind of parking requirement would the commercial use by Montgomery uh, in in Price House would that generate? Like, how many square feet is that? About eight spots. Eight spots. Do you, would you? I mean, does that really how many you would need if you just had your office there? Um, I would, I mean, it's required, and I would probably, I want to put as much parking as possible. Yeah, so there, there's part of the route. I want for, I mean, for the office use, first of all, yeah. the office use, the parking is going to be completely separated at okay. this point. So here's, here's part of the route, which is, if you were to build like 14 or 15 units here, which is I think what you came in with last time, on average, our code pretty much requires about one spot per unit. Mm -hmm. uh, we require visitor spots for over 10, but if you build smaller units, it's only half. On a street like this, you might get credit for two or three spots. There's no credits in 5B. Well, you know, that's something we could talk about. Because um, you have this big, long curb here, people are going to park there. I've, I'm really fascinated by how the Elm is working out. It's really amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and if you only, you know, if you didn't need eight, um, 
you know, I bet you, you know, I, I bet you, you could you could get this down to about needing twenty spots, and you could we could probably figure out a way that you could accomplish four of them on the street that you might only need to build. 15, 16, 17, I mean, that's all, I, I, I think the problem we get into all the time here at the Planning Commission is cars become the self-fulfilling prophecy. We need cars, we need to have a, build, a bigger building to pay for accommodating the cars. It's gotta be a bigger garage, need more units, need more cars, need more, I mean, it, it becomes this kind of reverse cyclone. But I think the mindset we try to encourage here is we're not building a city for cars. I know this is not near the train station, but you know, we're, we're not thinking that that building extra parking is a long game. And that really we need to think about how to minimize the amount of capital, the amount of investment, the amount of square footage, the amount of asphalt that's dedicated to cars. And, and I think that's probably one of your solutions here, is to think really aggressively about what is the bare minimum you can get by with cars. I mean, it's, it's incredible how the Elm is, is, is working out, I think, um, with one spot per unit. Um, and, um, and, and I think that one of the, where the, some of the places where we can look for flexibility is how we help accommodate parking with parking credits on the street and shared use credits and, and so forth. To make, because the, we, we have no game here in Narberth in over-investing in cars. We really don't. That's, that's not where we want any of our anyone's resources to go. So that said, that might help <clears throat> unlock more possibilities. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think for the commercial space, you know, people are working also, whether it's my office where we rent it or whatever the situation is, not every single person is coming within walking or biking distance to that office. You need to have enough spots for people to come to work and park their cars, you know? Yes. And it's a, it's a 4,000 square foot building at the end of the day, and so, I don't think eight parking spots for that many square feet really is is outrageous. And then I'm at 25, you know. So like, I don't see this as necessarily over parking. I think it's 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 the right amount for what we're doing in the range of what we're talking about. But we don't know how many units of housing. Well, like I said, if it's between 15 and 20, you're at that's that. a big difference. That's, that's but you're still at the 23 to 25 parking spots. Is what I'm saying. But, well, we're, but what Todd's saying is that there's street parking. We're in a semi, sub, we're like a dense suburban right. neighborhood where you can't district. expect every building to have a parking lot. I mean, we don't want that. So just to just to be clear, though, like from a design perspective, like what are we trying to accomplish, right? So that right. that parking's underground. The ramp every, stays the same. Every spot you don't have to excavate, you're not excavating a spot. So if they, if, right, so the economics of the project potentially are better if you don't have to dig this big of a hole. To Heidi's point about trees, this back row, if you could delete that row in the setback, then you would have, you know, regular dirt and you could not worry so much about the roof of the parking because that's this is not if I understand the drawing correctly that the yeah, so apartment doesn't actually it's it's another fifteen feet where the building starts. Right. Yeah, so this is actually the this is actually dirt over these spaces. Yeah, you have ten feet of dirt here. So you know the, the spaces that you would delete from the plan might be these. We do we do we do we can do green roof diet. There's things I, that I understand, understand that we, 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 we can I understand. I just, I'm just saying that which is honestly what we're doing here. That whole thing. That it, it's, it's, just, it's just that if you don't dig the hole, it it's less. But it's see, it's, it's a separate hole. and related issue is the trees that are going to be needed to screen that mm -hmm. low rise neighborhood from that massive building. You know, I mean, that's mm -hmm. and if, you, if they're right on top of a parking garage, you're not going to get trees of any kind of we, size. So, right? so and then just the, the final point yeah. about, about parking yeah, is, that, is, that, is that, is that, and I know you're looking at your parcel as just your parcel, it's sort of self contained mm -hmm. land uses. The reality is, it's across the street from a pretty big surface parking lot for the other development, which granted is planned for mixed use, but you know that parking lot is, is never full, right? The existing one, the Royal Bank building parking lot, I'd be shocked if that lot is ever full these days because everyone's teleworking and the restaurant's not there. You know, you have this this you know you go right now the garage is still there right next to you, but you know. And then we talked about the street parking. So there are a lot of places to park a vehicle mm -hmm. within 
a one minute walk of the Price House. So, you know, that's all we're saying is that it's not that people wouldn't be able to drive to the property, it's just that, um, you know, could you get away with five or eight minutes less? I mean, what happens when they don't allow people to park on their property anymore? Like, it, 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 you, know, you can't regulate them necessarily. What if, they, what if they knock the Royal Bank building down and build a 90% coverage building there that's, that's four stories and 45 feet or whatever it is, and, and then I can't even... cross that bridge when they... Whatever, what, I'm saying, is, what, what I'm saying, so like, you can't what just say, okay, park on the, the neighbor's <laughs> property. Well, you can lease spots. For a tenant, it's probably a lot cheaper than digging them out. But what I was really trying to get at is, if yeah, what's the point for the site plan? I mean, that's, that's what can, I'm trying to. If you can really minimize your need to dig out parking spots, you know, what about looking at it the way the Elm did it, where they did park right off of Windsor with a ramp down within the shell of the building? You can't build it out to the Montgomery. What's that? You can't build out to the Montgomery. Well, I said you, you, know, here you can't get a ramp from the No, a, you can do it the way they did it with the Elm. They got a they got a they got a ramp off off oh, Windsor. Yeah, it, you know you, you, these if these okay so it, instead of if you if you did excavate out then if your if your ramp was here mm -hmm. and if you have enough run then you end up here in, in your driveway. Right. This yeah. will be under deck. Exactly. And it's half part. it's half a level down. It's not the whole. Yeah, it's half a level down. It's, it's probably a little more than the L, and that's a pretty short run. Yeah, that's true. Um, and, and, and if that slope works there. You can walk down the street and look at it. I personally wouldn't compare the two. I don't know the details of the but elm. You can go but visit the elm. It's no, I've been inside. Okay, so you can go yeah. look at the ramp and, and see what that slope is. It's yeah. a built example. I just think that the perception is a way bigger property. So the perception is that it's smaller than it actually is. Right, so the, the actual yeah. dimension is what? The, yeah. The, is bigger. Well, there. we would measure it. Yeah. yeah. It is what, it is. what I'm saying is we've tried to engineer this, we just can't get a ramp up a meeting house. So it's just not it's just not with that building footprint. Not with any. You have the wrong building. Sir, sir, and sir and then, you're being argumentative, which is the first rule. First rule, yeah. first yeah. rule is I don't talking to the planning team. Michael's here on his own. Don't yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't mean to be science. argumentative, I just the building footprint is 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 denying you an opportunity to have a ramp that works. It doesn't put a dangerous situation on Montgomery Avenue. Doesn't crowd the Price House. But you're refusing to look at that. Jim, you talk to yourself Jim, about little... how the courtyard would be better if it faced uh, Meeting House Lane rather than uh, rather than the back of the Price House. But that's an option that would give you all these things. I think there's a conceptual. There's a missed opportunity conceptually with this plan. I really do. I'm an architect. I've drawn a lot of, I've, I've created a lot of miss, you know, missed opportunities in my time. I'm looking at one now. This this distance, right, is slightly, you know, it just, you, you, I think what he's saying is you, this this run of the ramp just puts you at the lot line. And that's maximum slope? But you're, you're starting with the low point and then you're starting with the point. So you have to go lower, you have to go down further. You have to go down way further from here. Yeah. So taking and saying, okay, put this here, well, that gets you down not too far. How far does it get you down? I don't know. I mean, I guess that, I mean, were you trying to get all the way down so that you were on grade for the first level? Because you need to. Well, no, you don't. You can't walk up the, the third, I mean. Well, no, I guess that's what we were saying. The yeah. elm isn't. The elm, you go up yeah. to the first floor. Yeah, it depends on the side you're building, because there's a... There's Again, a I'm tool. comparing it to a different property that has a different... No, no, what we're area. saying is, does the garage, the garage doesn't have to go all the way down below the grade level. Are you suggesting then the building has to come up higher? Come up yeah, higher. Yeah, but you're raising the building up probably eight feet. No, no, no. no. Well, no, no. I don't know. I do, I'm telling you, look at this. Yeah, this so is what trying, the fuck I got. It's trying to stay in right. right. trying to, yeah, Well, no. you're still trying to get four stories. <laughs> Yeah, in the 45 feet. So if it was three stories, yeah. then you would know probably. Yeah. Well, they all did it though. We're not in 45 feet. Yeah. That's right. It's a four story. Is, is it a four story? Four story. I mean, I'm looking at their ramp is 35, 33 and a half feet long. That's four parking spaces. That's how long their ramp is. I mean, I'm trying to find what the rise is. 
<laughs> but even if you had to go further, I really think that last row of parking could be replaced. Another thing you do is if you're not coming off Montgomery, is you can have a one lane driveway that's controlled with a um, with a gate. If you or even the, how wide how wide how long is the how wide is the Elm driveway? That's probably twenty-two. It's yeah, it's twenty-two. Mm -hmm. I think about buildings down near. So look at a hundred at a hundred feet at a seven percent grade, which is the probably the maximum, right? At seven seven feet, you can drop on the parcel. So you can get down like seven seven and a half feet from whatever the which gets you to grade with Montgomery Avenue. Oh, really? Is that the difference yeah, is from back there? Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. It doesn't even actually. Which is why. You're saying, so you're still, you're still above the grade of Montgomery Avenue. So it's, yeah, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight down. Yeah. The ramp could deliver you to the back of the building, more or less. Then what? Then, then you, you turn into the parking aisle that you have there at the back. You take up like six of the spots. And if you, it, then the whole point is, if you didn't need so many parking spots down there, you'd have more of a way to use. Oh, but then we're back to the original thing, doesn't it? I'm just surprised that some sort of internal ramp wouldn't work, given that we've seen it happen elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Well, again, it's just a function of slope. It's just riding on the run. Right. It's, not, it's not that big of a parcel. Right. So, um, if we go steeper than seven percent, I don't know. You can go ten percent. I think you can for a ramp. So nice. mm -hmm. you take it to nine. You could get down nine feet. But again, it's like because of the yeah, it's it's the three. slope from you know the slope. And where are we measuring the building height from? It's from the ground plane where on the lot. And it's the average of of the of the ground plane on the footprint of the building. On the perimeter. The perimeter of the building before the building is built. But it's like around the whole lot. It's but actually on the lot line. Well, it's the, what the code says. No, we do it differently. Is it lot line for five? Oh, I don't know. Is it even for five feet? So the five five A and five B has one set of rules, and, and uh, I think it's still the perimeter, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Maybe Kevin. Kevin. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're measuring it from Montgomery Avenue, you're at a disadvantage if the back of the site is already set up be higher. I mean, it does make sense to enter from Montgomery. For multiple reasons, height being one of them. But I, if you could squeeze a, a driveway in on the other side, that would just be so much better. So there's, there's two options for that. So there's method one and two. One is calculating the mean average measurements of the ground level at two foot intervals that put in the perimeter of the building footprint in its pre developed state. And two, calculating the mean average measurements of the ground level at one foot contour lines at the perimeter of the building footprint in its pre developed state. Oh, okay. That's for five. So for the building for footprint, so five A and B. So we would look at the ground where the building sits. Yeah. So the mean grade to the yeah, mean average of measurements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you might raise the building might be raised by three or four feet. Well, they it's very nasty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a nasty <laughs> Especially average. Can you find a section? Renovations. Are you looking for five hundred A dash twelve? Diagram of weighted building height measurements. No, I'm looking at the home. I'm trying to figure out how oh, to Okay. Zero, point six. Sorry. I can't imagine there's not a solution there if, if, if less has to be crammed into the parking area. Measurements every two. Yeah. And you have average. Yeah. 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 All right, are there any other <laughs> issues anyone would like to discuss uh, before we? Yeah, I think it's just, are there any, any other? I can say uh, my only other question is um, whether or not I, you have trash listed in that corner. I don't know if that's allowed. It is if you eat feet off the river property. Is that what it is? It's 10. Right in the front there. Yeah. I mean, it's a minor thing that could go anywhere. But. Well, it has to be serviced. Right. 
So I'm just throw out there, like if you could do a shared parking scheme and just have surface parking somewhere else instead of the instead of this underground. I know. I know. Make the building sweeter. Both buildings. Um, looks to me like the elm that the street level is about half down, half level down from the ground level. So whatever the height is, you have, you have half. Right. I mean, it's quite a slope too. Windsor's That's what I mean. Slope too. Yeah, uh, but if there was discussion of off-site parking on neighbor properties. And your comment was, well, you can't really plan on a neighbor affording that opportunity and just taking up somebody else's parking spot. But what about if there is across the street at the proposed development, uh, redevelopment of the Albrecht site, if they do have excess parking, could there be some situation where there's a formal agreement? I mean, as in like, a lease, if it is in fact access to their development, which could relieve the requirements underground. I, I don't know what they have. Again, I, it's a big site. Yeah, it, it's that, and it's also they just gave spots to I think the new building is going up there now, and also it's I can't rely on that. I mean, I mean this, these are for sale units. These are people going to be living in the neighborhood. They are for sale. Yes, these are for sale. Yeah, and it's it adds and, value. And, right? and, well, forget the value. I mean, like people live in the neighborhood. Like they're right. like so. What if that right. parking spot goes away all of a sudden because the lease is terminated for some well, reason? You know, you just can't. I don't want to get into that. I I, I need to have parking for people that own cars. You know, and and, and, and live and, and live here and they go to work every. You know, I, I remember you saying in one of the previous presentations that. You wanted to provide people with a like a comfortable entry to their to their space, so that they weren't wandering around outside in the rain, or whatever. Yeah, I mean, there's Which, a security you know, aspect. Yeah, I right. mean, I think there are you know there are justifications for pursuing. And I was trying to put it on the ground so we don't see the car. So it's like it's not like you're gonna walk by and see like, like, a parking lot, right? Like, that's the point of not having the parking. Like, you don't no, want to... We're, we're talking about the Elma, it's the same thing. It's like the, the parking is under the Elma. Right. It's, it's, so you don't care if there's one the spot or a hundred spots. It's just a historic property, this driveway. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and if there's ideas of how to treat so that, if we have an idea how to treat the wall going in so it, this. you know, works with what we're doing and maybe and a little why, less intrusive, you know, I don't necessarily want to put just a, you know, a concrete retaining wall there, and make, you know, those are, I think, part of the discussion, but I think for, for tonight, mm -hmm. Adam, you just go to the last page, I just want to make sure we focus on the three things that are kind of at hand. Is, is the primary front edge line, the wall height, when entering, a parking garage underground and the driveway entrance off my barn. Those those are the really the three the three issues at hand. You know, and, and the design and, and, and the other things are, are certainly things we, we can discuss. Um, but I think th this is the point of, of you know coming in for the informational meeting to you know address these issues with the current, you know updated plan and and you know so Heidi's point I think that's worth looking at and look again I think we did and I think that stone pillar was part of the issue if that's some of the feedback is hey is there a better way then maybe I can relook at that um, so that's the kind of feedback I, I'm looking for and if there's a general you know the wall height and the driveway off my body. Did Kevin mention the wall height to you? Yes. Is that where that came from? Yeah. Because it's not taller than the grade. No, but the way the definition reads, it says on either side of the wall. Yeah, see, I. And I so, would, what is on the other side of the wall? It like goes down. That like, doesn't make to sense. To me, that's a that like, yeah. that, It would be like, okay, well, when you pour a foundation. That for, doesn't make sense. Right, when you pour a foundation so for, for. For the purposes of our discussion, let's ignore that. Because yeah. That makes no sense. Yeah, I think we can the, work the, with that. Well, it's on the grass side. This is, wall. again, this is me trying to address. I hear, I hear, I hear, I hear. <laughs> But it doesn't make yeah. any sense. 
I so happen to agree with what you're looking at. Spend another minute talking about what's on the asphalt side of the wall. Fair enough. But again, picture the. Now, still, the hall at the end of that wall there, I'm showing you that four and a half feet off of the grade instead of three feet. Okay. So that's what then we're we'll talking about. Yeah. And that may be something we can, again, I think if maybe if we look at moving the driveway again, maybe that reduces the impact of, of the, that wall. And if it can be a little bit, if we saying. can look at what, making it narrower as a concession also. Yeah, I want to care about safety, and that's, that'd be a traffic question, but it's certainly. But you, you were saying it could be a gate. Uh, who said there yeah, could be a gate? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting, over, I was getting over my skis. Oh, okay. <laughs> I and I don't think we should assume that moving the driveway is automatically going to be feasible. No. Because it, for, like, it changes the angle and it's relocating it from where it is now. Well, you'd have to come in from, you'd have to limit how you come into it. Probably from Montgomery. Well, you, right, I'm not, are you even allowed to turn left into this driveway? Well, I was going to say that from I mean, it's going to be part of the traffic question. study and they're probably going to recommend some kind of restriction. Um, you know, yeah. so, like yeah, either whether it's you know this time of day you know, during rush hour, no left turns in or something like that. I'm just, I'm just not sure that it'll be less impactful because of the angle of the lot. It's not a square lot. And then the, no, I don't, I don't know that it'll be less impactful I, 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 either, I, I, but... The bigger question is like, you know, could the, could the ramp be sleep, you know, steeper? It's on here, it's like outdoor ramps can be up to 12%, so... Yeah, I'm pretty sure we pushed the limit, but if that's, you know, so let, let me look, let, I understand, let me look at that and see if, the, if we can stay within the current Limit, or if we have to push it, but where it gets to, if we push it to something that's borderline and raise up the person, right. yeah, um, in that section. I just want to be careful raising up too much sure because we have, I want to make it. I want to make it so people can well, get into the building. You know, well, so so historically, you, know, you want it to be accessible too. Right. Historically, uh, residential buildings are raised up so that you're. It, it, it creates a better privacy. For it just example. feels better for the first floor. Yeah, I mean, well, all these things are good feedback. And this is what I'm looking for. So, um, I guess, in, in, unless there's any big further issues, um, I guess I'd like to wrap up. That's okay. Um, first, uh, Michael, I want to thank you for coming in. I I apologize if at any point you felt like. You were being beat up on. <laughs> I sincerely apologize. I want us all to recognize Michael came here voluntarily because I asked him to, to share his ideas, to get feedback, and I think it's important for us all to, to you know, make sure we honor that. Um, and I honor that. Thank you. Um, I think, I hope the message we can convey is these things here and things like figuring out can parking in the street count. We don't tend to get too, I mean, obviously we need to work with those things, but we tend not to get hung up on those for site plans we really like. <laughs> we do tend to get hung up on them for site plans we don't like. So I think the solution is to make sure the site plan is as, is, 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 is as likable as possible. Um, and then the other things flow from that. Because There's a lot more flexibility. Uh, and I think the feedback you're getting is, is two major things. Is we, we know how hard you've worked, as we've talked with you a lot over the last year. It still feels like the Price House is being crowded a bit, and the heart, I think, will justly have its own conversation about this when it meets and can deliberate. Um, and that overall, it's, despite what the zoning might allow, um, it feels like it's trying to cram too much on, and it feels like a lot of that might be because of the overinvestment in car infrastructure. Um, um, and those might be things to take a hard look at in terms of giving, figuring out how a fresh look at that might give you more flexibility to address some of the other site challenges. I appreciate our creativity in thinking about uh, cross a uh, lot parking arrangements. We do allow for those in our parking code. I mean, theoretically, you could, but I understand why, particularly for a um, condo type situation, that you, you wouldn't find that to be favorable. Um, but um, maybe um, um, maybe access easements as opposed to parking easements may be more feasible, just circulation easements. Um, um, 
in any case, those aren't things we can ask you to rely on. Um, so all I, all I can say is um, I, I hope it's been helpful to you. Um, you know we're always willing to explore whatever we can. Uh, you're always welcome to come back here and, and bring whatever you have um, 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 for, for, for further conversation. This is, so we're all here as volunteers because this is hugely important to us. I mean, we don't like to sit around and complain about things. We like to sit around and have success stories. So um, that's what we're in it for. So all I can say is we, we pledge to keep trying to be as constructive as we can with our feedback um, and you know, provide whatever kind of ideas and insights that you might find helpful. Um, so um, anything else we can offer tonight? No, I think that's, uh, that's good feedback. Um, I, I will say, you know, it, I, I'm going to look at all these things. I think in terms of the overall, you know, garage area and um, of, of just kind of the, the general size of it, you know, with what we're trying to accomplish with preserving the price house as well as with hiding the cars underground, there is just, there's a significant cost to that. And, you know, we're going to need to... So I, I just I just want everyone to be aware of that and what I'm tr the things that I'm trying to do to make this, in my opinion, is a good project have significant costs and I need you know they need to be paid for. So part of that is big part of that is preserving the price out. A big part of that is hiding the cars from everyone's sight underground so they're not sitting next to the price house. Yeah. Right. And and so that just so so. I don't see a scenario where this is getting drastically smaller and those things happen, right? And so I just, I, I do want to just make sure that's clear from this and I will go back and I will try to do everything I can like I have been doing uh, to, you know, get this to a place we're comfortable with. But, you know, I just want to set that expectation that, you know, I'm, I'm most likely not coming back with something significantly smaller in terms of size or number of units at this point. Um, so I just want to make sure that's clear, and, and you know, uh, but I, but again, well, I think the driveway is great, and I think you know some of these things I'll, I'll definitely look at, and, and we'll see what we can do. I just ask a uh, question about the first floor uses. Um, sure. Could you maybe just kind of quickly recap? What yeah. So it looks like apartments. And yeah. Things? So it's going to be units on the first floor. There's going to be amenity space in a lobby. So the amenity might be uh, we're not sure exactly what you like a lounge, somewhere for people to sit and hang out. And apartments are allowed on the first floor of the next use building? And this would be an apartment building. Right. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you know, people are Todd, uh, we lost the rest of the group. Hey, Todd, you're muted, too. We lost the uh, entire group. I think Jim was running that. Eric, can you text Chris? Are we, can you hear us now? Yeah, I he just hear. came back. We had lost the whole owl there for a minute. <laughs> oh my gosh. How long Chris, ago was Chris that? is here too. Uh, just for the last like minute. Okay, great. Okay, good. All right. So, Chris, good evening. Vince, good evening. How are you? Uh, I'm sorry about that. We we did not know it was tonight, so thank you. Yeah, and I'd like to offer my apology to you and Vince for that. We had um, proposed to schedule dates to um, to uh, our staff, and in between the time we found out they wouldn't work, 
uh, and we rescheduled them. Michelle and Carol left her job, and so apparently she did, she sent you the news and didn't realize it wasn't accurate. Okay. And it took us quite a while to get updates, so it is on us. We apologize, and we're grateful that you're able to um, join us by Zoom tonight uh, for the um, review of the final plans for 32 Sabine. So, um, folks, we looked at this. It was about a year and a half ago, really, and, uh -huh. that we um, that we approved the, uh, the the preliminary plan. I walk by that house about every other day and wonder when we would see you again. And so, <laughs> we're, we're glad you're here. Um, I think is Jen. Uh, first of all, we have two new planning. Were you here, Jen and Adam, when we reviewed Thirty Two Saint I can't recall. About a year and a half ago. So maybe yeah. you mean about like on the very first. Okay, well, so I thought we might have like some big trees. Right? What's that? A big tree. That yeah. Come down. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're all here. Jim Spear is not. He's left planning commission. So there's just six of us. And Dave Brower is not here tonight. So there's just five of us tonight. Um, uh, we have Eric Narkowicz from the MCPC, Kevin and Eric, and uh, John uh, from uh, Asbro Bro Consultants. So, um, if you could uh, kind of walk us through where the plan stands, what do you want? Thanks very much, guys. Um, what you've done to tie it up. And I know there was some back and forth regarding landscaping and the street tree commission. And uh, we want to make sure that that's all been resolved appropriately. So, can you kind of fill us in on how you've you know, addressed the outstanding issues on this since we last saw you? Yes. Uh, would you like me to share my screen so you can see the plan, or do you already have that? If you don't mind, uh, I think Adam, you I enabled it. Okay, you should be able to do it, Chris. Okay. Anyway, good to see you again. It's been a little while. Yes, good to see you guys too. <laughs> can you see my screen now? Yeah, we can see your screen. Okay, so this is the plan, uh, and you're right. It's been about a year and a half. The holdup was really the easement with the neighbor. Um, there was an easement on the books, but the easement lines did not match where the actual driveway was. And so in order to get those two to be in the same spot, we had to get agreement from the neighbor. And in doing that, he wanted some things. Uh, and so after a lot of back and forth, uh, we came to an agreement on exactly where the driveway would be and exactly where the easement would be. Uh, and that was really the holdup. In terms of the plan, we haven't changed anything, uh, I'll say, voluntarily. But we made some revisions to address the zoning officer's letter from a year and a half ago from the borough engineers, from the planning, Montgomery County Planning Commission, uh, and from the Shade Tree Commission. Uh, and really, the only change outside of those, and, and we uh, submit, we submitted the final plans in November. We submitted a cover letter showing how we addressed each of those. The only other change that was a little different was really down here. Uh, you could see this lighter line here is where the existing driveway was. And we were originally using that past these two trees right here, this beech tree and this pine tree. Uh, but as part of the uh, conversations with the neighbor, he was concerned about this pine tree, which is on his property, and asked that we shift the driveway a little further from that tree to better protect it, uh, remove some paving underneath that drip line, which then removed a tree on the other side. And so in exchange, we show another replacement tree up here. Um, and this project was in front of the Shade Tree Commission last night um, and was approved with some conditions, which we will comply with. We have a new review letter from the borough engineer, which are, are will comply items. We have a review letter from the borough landscape architect, uh, which are also will comply items. Um, you know, I think many of those are, and we did not, we, we made some changes yesterday before uh, the plan was presented to the Shade Tree Commission. We did not um, formally resubmit these to the borough landscape architect yet, but I, I believe the majority of the concerns were really addressed when we added this uh, kind of a new chart here on saying which trees were, were removed and added. And so 
you know, I guess that it's, it, I'm viewing that letter as will comply. We will submit formally along with an escrow for the trees. Um, and I, I think that, you know, that's a brief overview. I'm happy to go more in depth with other things. Um, but this project did go, you know, as you said, has already been through the process and uh, it's been a while. I, I guess I would like to ask John, do you have any questions or comments at this point you'd like to bring to our attention? Uh, no, I do not. Um, I issued the review letter um, last week, as Chris just stated, though they will comply. Um, most of the review comments were minor in nature, uh, just clarifying some of the, the plan notes and some of the calculation items. Um, but I think the plan that they presented here, and if they make the changes as requested, um, it satisfies the intent of the borough code. Do you clarify the calculations about the calipers of trees being removed and that need to be replaced? Is that all agreed upon now? Seeing there was a discrepancy that you flagged. Yeah, Chris, will the revised plan clarify that discrepancy? Okay. Um, I see the Street Tree Commission uh did approve this with the condition the applicant provide the letter from an arborist referenced in their may 2021 letter what can you tell me what that letter what that letter from the arborist is about right so there were uh, there was a couple large trees on this property and there was one i believe it was this one right in the front where if you can see it's kind of a diamond shape with an x in it marked in red uh that you know we had looked at and called uh, uh, hazardous or, or dead disease dying and, and we kind of looked at that from you could see from you know basically it was chopped up from overhead wires uh, and so they wanted something more official they wanted a report from an arborist and so we have that report uh, i believe i forgot to submit it to them um, but I, I will submit that and so it was just kind of a matter of you know, we were saying that tree wasn't uh, viable and they wanted some more proof than, than the pictures we had shown before. Um, and then where, I was, I, where, can you show us where these, okay, replacement trees provided list the species that you're choosing? Very fine. Right here. Uh, are those from a, is, the, is that from a borough planting list? Are those, are those from a borough planting list? So, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, I wish I could say yes. But kind of the process with this is when we, when we went to the Shade Tree Commission about a year and a half ago, we had some trees on this plan. Uh, and they made some recommendations to us for, to make some changes. And so I know like these American elms were a request that came from the shade tree commission that was in their, their letter. I believe we had originally called out Zelkovas. And I know that in the back, we originally had our, an arborvitae row and uh, we talked about, you know, why we thought arborvitae was appropriate and they had asked for some more native plantings uh, and we kind of we came up with a uh, an agreement where it was kind of half and half, and so we showed some arborvitae and some magnolias, uh, and then they actually had us change the type of magnolia from I forget what kind we had before. I look that up quickly. I think I think it was or we had Shipka cherry laurels, and they asked us to change those to sweet bay magnolias. So. Um, I wish I could tell you that yes, it's from the list, but I, I, I can tell you that we went back and forth with them and they made some suggestions on species and we made those changes. Okay, so these, these species have the endorsement of the Street Tree Commission? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Todd, that, that's correct. And um, just from my review, they're suitable for the site. So I'm good with them as well. Okay. Um, not, not for any particular purpose, except for my own curiosity. What are the trees along the street going to be? 
These are the American elms along the street. All right. Lovely. Okay. Um, it felt to me like the landscaping was really the main thing to be resolved, as well as you know making sure the documentation of the easement for the driveway and the cross easement for the stormwater, which is pretty routine thing, was was all in place. Um, does anyone on the commission have any questions or comments about this? Okay, uh, Eric, do you have any further comments from MCPC about this? Um, not my favorite. Sorry. <laughs> That's I apologize. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the only thing I see is that the employee had noted in her letter um, the requirement for submission of architectural renderings. Um, is that something that's being provided? Uh, I did not submit copies of those with this final plans. We had presented those with the preliminary plans. And so I can just open these up quickly. This, These are the elevations. I can submit those with the next submission so that there's another copy on file with the, uh, with the borough. Well, that's up to, uh, sure, that'd be great. Yeah, and we should have those in our database as well. So, um, it, it, so are they unchanged, the, the rendering then from the one submitted before? Or? No, no, we didn't change anything with the buildings. Uh, okay. All of the changes were really a result of uh, addressing review letters and just getting agreement on that easement. And the easement was the part that, that took the longest. Okay, yes, yeah, we could submit those uh, renderings, but that would be great. Okay. So this could be attached to the final plan submission. And I, I recall um, in one of our meetings, there was a conversation about the decks and their depth and width. And Adam, I think you raised the question about the functionality. Um, was that addressed between tentative and preliminary? Or is that something that's changed since we saw this last, the, the, the decks of the driveway? I think that was addressed uh, between preliminary and final. Um, okay. Trying to look over my response letter here. And I believe this... This number four, the plans have been revised to increase the deck width to 19 feet in order to provide an unencumbered space width of nine feet of the 10 foot parking space um, as shown on sheet one. Uh, there are parking spaces in the garage under the building, but I think the planning commission was also looking for enough space underneath the decks. And so we did make a change there. That's what you had raised, Adam, I think. Something along those lines, it, it seems pretty functional. I know we had asked about like can you really they're held up by posts in the corner, which impacts vehicle maneuverability, but you know if it works, it works. Yeah. <laughs> if it doesn't, it's mm -hmm. as long as there's no vehicle vehicle impact, we'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Or> pedestrian. <laughs> uh, anything else from them see Oh no. Okay. Thank you, Craig. And nothing else anything else you all remember from, from this? So um, I guess then what would be in order is to entertain uh, a motion to approve this final plan um, um, with um, the condition that the compliance with the uh, the review of the uh, the Borough Engineer and the Borough Landscape Architect and the Street Tree Commission review letters in place and that the uh, architectural renderings be incorporated in the final plan. I believe that would be so moved. Is our second? Second. Okay, and did you get the gist of that? No, I'm you sorry. Can you pick it up from the uh, <laughs> basically why we we have a motion on the floor to approve the final plans for 32 save by contingent on the applicant's um, compliance with the Requests of the of the borough engineer, and borough landscape architect, and street tree commission review letters, and with the provision that the architectural renderings be attached to the final plan set as required. And then of course, of course, so the shade tree commission, the borough engineer, the borough landscape architect. Anyone else? The letters. I don't think so. The yeah. MCPC. What's that? Oh, just the renderings. Yeah, well, I, yeah I, and I said that, the, and also that the architectural renderings be attached, incorporated in the final plans. 
that we've had. Is that acceptable to you all, Chris and Vince? Yeah. Yes, thank you. All in favor of approving your two sigma and those conditions? Okay. Uh, okay. It is uh, recommended for approval. We will communicate this to council so they're at least aware of it for their meeting tomorrow. I don't know if it's on their agenda tomorrow or not. Maybe it won't be until their business meeting, but we'll let them know. Did they change? Was, the date, of the, was the date of their meeting changed also? Because I have, I, I think I had that from next week. Um, Last week was December, Chris. Okay. <laughs> no, their uh, business meeting is tomorrow. Excuse me, their workshop meeting is tomorrow. Their business meeting is two weeks after that. Um, but you can rattle their chain tomorrow. Okay. Thanks. Thank you both for being able to join us. The line worked out. We appreciate it. And again, my apologies um, for the confusion. Thank you. No, you're full. No worries. Thank you. Okay. Good luck. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Any other uh, business? Any public comment? No one here? Anyone on the internet like to make public comment? Okay. With that, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Um, oh, sorry. One note. Sorry. Um, can I just give a brief update? I mean, it is going to be brief on <laughs> the meeting last night with the Environmental Advisory Council. We'll entertain a report from the AC. It's very exciting. I can hardly contain myself. Um, we invited, well, EAC and myself as liaison to Environmental Advisory Council, um, invited Jewel Community Power to present their implementation plan regarding the 100% renewable um, by 2030 that will start to transition this year, 2023. <laughs> um, and it looks like we're all, you know, we're all, we have everything lined up to put it in front of council, yet to come up with a timeline. Um, but it looks like Narworth will be the very first borough of the 955 boroughs in the state of Pennsylvania to have a municipal supply of renewable energy for residents. So, what form is this? What, is it, what does this mean? Yeah. <laughs> So like, um, you know, I don't have to pay for electricity anymore. No, no, it's just, you know how like, um, you get like Pico will say, there's a clean energy option. And then you have to get on the phone and you've got to jump through hoops to get the right person on to make the transition and then they upcharge and all these random things. Um, I'm sorry, I left this, uh, this has been mentioned before, but the community, uh, choice aggregation group that is um, a renewable energy um, house, like a like an administrator of sorts, will um, they're hired as a third party by municipalities to um, make arrangements so that uh, boroughs like Narberg can have. A dis can have a supply of renewable energy, local, you know, local solar, local wind, whatever it is, um, that is channeled through the municipality and then out through PICO distribution channels. Without the residents ever having to make a phone call to PICO, it would just automatically transition to renewable. At this point, there's no upcharge. There might be some volatility and over the next year, five years, due to Inflation Reduction Act manufacturing and you know just who knows what is gonna happen next but um but basically it's this third party called jewel community power who makes the arrangements for the um community choice aggregation aggregation being the key word to getting a large you know getting a population of people to opt in for this um, renewable, which brings price down, creates stability, um, and all that good stuff. So um, that's where we are. And, you know, there were a lot of questions. As soon as the meeting minutes come up for that, I will, um, you know, probably comb through a little bit, whatever's relevant for planning commission. Maybe we can talk again, talk more, talk further about, you know, what, you know, what we can do or what more Jewel Community Power can do because Jewel Community Power is not only helping Narberg get their renewable energy for electricity, 
but they're also contracted to be advisors for weatherization, energy efficiency, EV charging, all of these things that were taking into consideration for our green building ordinance. So I did ask them, you know, in what capacity could they advise? We have some big development projects coming up over the next year or two. Um, we would be looking to, if there is an aggregation of people buying heat pumps, buying LED lamps, buying whatever the case, how could we tap into that and how could we incentivize further some of the, you know, things that we're putting on the table? So, um, so you know, the questions out there, they said they hadn't really thought about aggregating those types of things, but that they'll see if that's, you know, a way that they could develop their service. And what are they speaking to them? So they spoke last night with EAC specifically about the uh, renewable energy plan for the, for the borough. I asked if they could, to be determined, come in and talk to us about, you know, how they might be able to make what we're proposing more robust or make any suggestions that they might have. Um, specific to, you know, they're very knowledgeable on legislation, on what's available through federal agencies that we may not know about. They know, they just, they're insiders. They just know. So, um, so hopefully we can make that happen. Oh, sooner rather than later. This might be a subject for a big public meeting. Yeah. yeah this, is a, this is a big deal. Oh, but I mean, that'll happen inevitably. We'll have to put this all in front of the, mm -hmm. but we don't have to put everything in front of the public. Yes, you do. Well, sure. how about an Earth Day or something? Okay. Yeah, maybe. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a major, it's a major thing. Yeah. You mean the 100% renewable for electricity? No, the thing you're talking about right now. The whole yeah. Whole yeah. Well, yeah. the green building ordinance we've been working on. I mean, yeah. I'm looking to them to just kind of like check our map. But you don't, I don't know what we don't know. Right. <laughs> well, it's always tricky. It always comes out in the wash. Now we're that, we were that expression comes from. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I just renewed my energy plan. Yeah, so yeah. maybe uh, maybe this will be a better deal. Okay, so we have a motion to adjourn. I need, yeah. I need motion to adjourn. All the favor to adjourn. Aye. Aye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Next thank meeting. you. What's our next meeting? Um.